In this lesson for Bobcat Cam, we're going to cover how to configure and build a 5-axis head-head type machine inside the software. So what we're going to do to show you how to get your numbers and measurements off the machine is I'm just going to open up the simulation here. So take it just a moment. Now, what I've done here on this is I've actually created what looks kind of like an indicator down at the bottom. I'll turn off everything in here but that. Now over here, I'm going to go ahead and lift this up a little bit so you can see it. Now the first thing you want to calculate out is your pivot point. The pivot point is the distance from the face of the spindle to the 90 degree rotation point of the uh, A-axis. So to calculate that out, you're going to take your indexer and you're going to find the bottom of the ground spindle face. I'll see if I can just move this over kind of. And you're going to bring it down until it zeroes the indicator. You're going to record that number. Let's just call it Z1. Then you're going to lift your head up. You're going to pivot up 90 degrees. You're going to bring it back down and over. And you're going to bring it down get a little bit better visual here. So we're touching on the side of the ground spindle face here. You're going to record that number and we're going to call it Z2. Then you're going to measure the diameter of that spindle face where you're measuring. And you're going to take the radius of it and you're going to add it to Z2. And you're going to get a new Z2 value. Then you're going to take Z1 and subtract it from Z2 and that gives you your pivot distance. Very easy to do. The next thing that you're going to do is you're going to calculate your travels of your machine. For this I'm going to turn this off. I'm going to right click on one of these and just zero mine. So the way this is zeroed, if you think of the grid here as my table, that ground face that we took our Z1 off of, you want to have bring it all the way down as close as it could come, if not to the uh, table, and you want to have it centered in the table. From there, what you're going to do is you're going to start with the head. You're going to move it as far up as it'll go and record the number, like positive 20 in this case, and how far down it will go from there, you know, theoretically, minus 15 in this case. And that's going to be my travels for my Z. Same with my X. How far positive X can it go from that center position? And how far negative X can it go from that center position? And you can see this is positive and negative 20. And the same thing in the Y. Now you don't want to forget about your C. You want to know how much it can rotate before it has to stop and rewind. Positive and negative. And then the A as well. You can see this one here has a limit in the A to keep it from hitting of 120. Now my C has no limit on this one, but if you have one that has a limit of like 9999 point something before it has to rewind, you want to put that in and we'll show you where to put that in just a moment. So once you have your pivot length and you have all of your travel distances, we're ready to create the machine inside the software. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to right click milling tools. We're going to go down to default and current settings and we're going to actually add the machine we're going to build. So we're going to hit add. We're going to choose the configuration type of a head head for this one. We're going to give it a name. We're going to call this the V25 training mill. It was called HH. So we know what it is. And then that's created the configuration. So when I come down to machine definition, you can see my configuration of my machine has been laid out for me. So the first thing you have is the base. You can see X is attached to the base, Y to the X, Z to the Y, C, and then A, in and then down to the holder. And the workpiece is back off of the base or the table. So if Z moves, C and A will move with it. If X moves, they all move. Now we're going to start configuring the, the travels and pivot distances. So all you do is click on one of the components, in this case the X. You can see it's the X axis. And the direction. The direction is either a positive or negative, and you want the one either on what axis is actually moving, in this case the X. Think of it as the actual tool is moving, it's a positive one, and if the tool is stationary in the table or whatever else is moving around it, it would be a negative one. So we're going to do a positive one in the X, and then we're going to come down here to our minimum, put minus 20 and enter, and then our maximum would be positive 20 and enter. The initial value is just a number between those two. It can be all the way to one end or the other. It doesn't really matter. It's just an initial value when you open simulation. 
go to Y, ID is Y, you can see my Y axis is a positive one, and we're going to set our travels here, minus 20, positive 20, initial values between them. Same with the Z, we have the one on the Z, we're going to do minus 15, and we're going to do a positive 20. Now I'm going to change the initial value to zero, which is between the two of them. Our C, now this is a negative one on the Z, and our minimum and maximum values, remember we're going to leave those wide open so the defaults will be fine. Same with the A, we're on the X, and here, this is our pivot point that we've entered in in center point. So you see our center point is 13.8583 up from the Z0 position. Um, in this case, that would be from the face of the ground spindle. In this case, that's just the default. I'm just going to leave that in. Let's say that's what we calculated when we took that Z2 and took the Z1 from it in those calculations we got earlier. Here you want to set your, your limits. And in this case, we said we have a minus 120 limit and a positive 120 limit. And zero is between those. That's all you have to do to set up the machine. We've gone down through all of our different components here and set up the values. Now you can come back and add geometry if you have that created for the machine for visualization. That's covered in another video in this set. So at this case, we'll go ahead and OK it. We're going to go into Milling Tools, Part, Current Settings, so we can actually choose it for the file we have open. There it is at the bottom. Then we'll go back to modules and mill simulation and take a look at the movements of it. Now this won't have the machine actually visual in there, but it'll have the tool we can move around and stuff. So let's move this out a bit here. Turn that off. A couple of these other things. So if I come in here and I say, okay, here's my Z. I can go up 20, down minus 15. My X can go positive 20, as you can see here in the box minus 20. Good. Same with the Y. Now the C, it's going to spin around on itself so you really won't see it with this configuration, but it is turning. And then the A, let's back out a little bit more here. Should be able to go positive 120 and minus 120. So now our machine is configured, ready to be used. There you can see if I'm tipped up here and I spin it, you can see how it's spinning around in the sea. So now your machine is ready to be used and configured and you're ready to go start simulating out your toolpaths and calculations. This concludes this lesson.